x2 equals to it's the measure function x over two x over two t minus one over two contains the sum of n or the basal function is n as a function x and t to the n power. So this is the generating function. And now we can use that to divide the recurrence relation. There's two independent uh, recurrent relations. So the, uh, we'll get them both by this relation. And the um, process to do it is uh, because there are two arguments, we can, what we can do is do a derivative of the, the generating function on both sides, the left hand side and right hand side, with respect to x and t, and then uh, compare left hand side and right hand side, and express those in series of basal function. I mean, it's a series of power of t and the coefficients of basal function, and then matching the same power of t. Then you get the uh, relationship between basal functions. So let's do it. So we can take uh, like a partial g partial t, and then later on we'll do a partial g partial x. So therefore you have uh, two relations. So for partial g partial t, what you get is uh, this exponential function, right? So you, then you take the derivative and we keep the, the exponential function, which is this g, and then take the derivative of the argument, which you have x over t, one plus one over t square, right? And then, uh, then it's just uh, the same exponential function. So you can write like, uh, I mean, it's, it's just the same. Right. This is just copy from here. This is the derivative of the left hand side. And you can do the derivative of, uh, for the right hand side with respect to t. So what you get is n, j is n, t to the n minus one. Okay. So, uh, then we want to make it uh, in the same power series, same summation, and then each term has the same uh, t to the, the same power. Then you can set the coefficient to uh, to be the same. Okay, and now to uh, to get that. Uh, the right hand side is t to the n minus one, the left hand side is not. And see, so we can like simplify the left hand side first. So the left hand side has two terms. Uh, for this summation, it's good that it's, on, it's from negative infinity to infinity. So you, you don't need to worry about the boundary that much because the boundary always a minus infinity to infinity. So that kind of a good thing. Uh, so the first term is x over two, and then you have j sub n, so you have two terms, j sub n, t sub n, t to the power n. And the second one is minus a plus x over two, and j sub n, and then t to the n minus two, right? So this is the, the left hand side, but they are all not uh, of the same part is t to the n, this t to the n minus two, this is t to the n minus one. So we can save that. We can uh, say, we do a sifting. Say, if you are smart enough, you can write down the sifting in one step, but uh, I usually do it in two steps, right? If you just say uh, for this term, 
n change to like m minus one, right? n is m minus one, so n is m minus one. Then the next step is uh, changing m back to n because this is a dummy variable. So, so for this case, it's simple enough. So you can just, so summing jn times t to the n power is the same as summing jn minus one to the n minus one power, right? So there's no n in the in front, so you don't need to worry about too much of that, right? And now the same thing, if you want n minus two, it becomes like n minus two becomes n minus one, then n is just m plus one, right? So this change to n, and then this, this becomes m minus one, and this is j m plus one, and then you change back m equals n, so this is n plus one, and this is n plus one. Right. And n minus one. So because we want everything in the, in terms of n n minus one. Okay. So now you get all the terms, all the terms are in terms of t to the power n minus one. So the coefficient must be the same. So this means that the, this is x over two, and you have j so n minus one plus j n plus one that equals to n times n okay so that kind of trivial and sometimes uh, you want to put the coefficient on the other side so this becomes a 2x we can become 2n over x that much of all this all right, so either the, I mean, either way is fine, so. Okay, you, you got this right, so. So it's pretty straightforward. Now we do the same thing for when taking G over, uh, derivative of G with respect to X, right? Do the same thing. Uh, for the left hand side, we get one half of t minus one over t times exactly the same thing, which is sum t, so n, t, so t power n, right? Now the right hand side is a little different because now uh, we need to take a derivative with respect to x, so this becomes j n prime. The n prime means that d, dj is so n dx, right? Okay. Now we do the same thing just like here. So okay, what we have is the first term is j, we have one half, and then j, so we might actually multiply the one half to the other side if you want, so that equals the two. That we drop the factor of two. So that the first term is uh, j sub n t n plus one, and then minus j sub n t n minus one. Uh, and this is forget this is t sub n. Okay. We want to make everything to t sub n, so we change that to c sub n. If this change to this change to n, then uh, this become n minus one. If this is change to n, then this become to n plus one, right? And then compare the set coefficient to j n minus one minus j n plus one equals to two times j n plus one. Right. right, so you have two recurrence relations. Right, is this process okay? So, this is uh, 
a pretty straightforward process and simple enough. So, uh, uh, especially for PhD student, uh, you pay attention to derivation, important derivation that is simple enough. So those are the thing that is more likely to be asked in, in comprehensive exam. So just like this one, so because it's derivation is straightforward, it's just take like uh, four or five lines, <laughs> you can derive two uh, recurrence relation starting from the, the generating function. Okay, so I mean, you don't have to memorize everything. You basically get the get the idea and then get the process and then work out the details you know, based on the idea. Okay, All right. So, so this is uh, uh, fourteen point seven, fourteen point eight. Okay, fourteen point nine is just a simple uh, example. Set n equals to zero. So n equals to zero, of course, the, for this one, the right hand side is zero. So it means that j, j sub minus one plus j sub one is zero. It means that the, the two are related to uh, one another, it's just a negative sign, right? That's just what we, a special case that we talk about, j minus n is minus one the power n to the so j sub minus one is equals to minus j sub one. Okay, so that that's uh, coming from here also. And for here, we get the uh, one relationship because uh, now these two are the same with the negative sign. This become two j sub one. So if n is zero, you get j zero prime is equals to j one. Very negative. No, this because this is one negative. There's a negative sign. All right, so that's a very uh, simple relationship between J sub one and J zero prime. So that coming from this um, equivalence formula, and then uh, the next three equation are other consequences uh, using this two. Using this two, you can keep deriving a different relationship. They are not independent because they are coming from these two. These two are independent, but they are combining these two, you can keep deriving other, other relation. So those are sometimes useful, but uh, they are not independent. So uh, uh, I'll leave that as exercise. There will be a homework problem asking you to divide that one. Okay, so 